uh, to order. It's the Moortown uh, Select Board. It's Tuesday, August 17th. Um, tonight here in the John Pogobu meeting room. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to start on the first agenda item. We have general public comments. Is there anyone here uh, for general public comments? Uh, I just have a comment uh, regarding the legal trail issues that uh, have been brought up a lot lately. Um, we did a site visit on legal trail 15, and there keeps being a mistake in the minutes weren't corrected on 7 6 2021. It keeps saying legal trail 18. That would bring you into a whole nother part of the town. I think they call it show acre trail. All right. All right, we'll look at the meeting minutes and um, rectify those next. Meeting. Anything else, Travis? No, thank you. All right. Uh, is there anyone else for general public comments? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next uh, agenda item. We have the Mad River Valley Rec District Committee. And uh, I'm looking for Mr. Rosenberg. Is that you, sir? I'm here. Yeah. Hi. How are you doing today? Are you good? Good. Is someone with you? Yep. This is my son, Sonny. Hey, how you doing, son? Good, uh, Maybe. <laughs> well, thank you for coming, and uh, you submitted a letter uh, to take the place uh, of Eric Kitchard on the uh, committee. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I, so we moved here about a year ago. Um, we're just we're looking for opportunities where we can help, and this seemed like a committee that needed a seat bill. It seems like pretty straightforward administrative position. Uh, I've been the president of my condo board in Brooklyn for almost 10 years now. Uh, so I'm familiar with sort of basic board procedure uh, and then uh, anything sort of administratively, I'm a good communicator, I'm happy to sort of work on the team and sort of do whatever I can to help keep that committee moving forward. Well, great. I don't think it'll be anything close to uh, being the president of the condo association. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small building. <laughs> Brooklyn. You said Brooklyn, right? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. So what, um, how did you find Moortown? Uh, that is a good question and a long story, so I'll keep it quick. But we, we came over to the Mad River Valley uh, last summer. Uh, we had a rental house in Warren that was really just the house looked nice. Um, so we ended up there, and then as soon as we landed here, we realized that we weren't going to be able to bring him sort of back safely into school in the fall last year uh, back in Brooklyn. We decided we were just going to make a full go of it and live up here full time. So we started looking for property immediately, and the house we found happened to be in Moortown. Um, just, just a lucky coincidence because we love Moortown. Like, the location is perfect for us. The town's been great. The schools are fantastic. Everyone's been super welcoming. Very happy to end up finding a house we found here. Well, certainly welcome. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I'm just interested. You know, it's nice that we have people moving in, and we you know, just like to see who draws them here. Um, so thanks. It'll be a very. The committee is. I, I'm not even certain how we meet quarterly, Sasha. Uh, it's Sasha. She's our assistant. She's over here. She can get you the information uh, when they're meeting. And, uh, Get you set up there, so maybe you can get some meeting minutes and find out what's going on. Okay. Um, but we certainly appreciate you uh, putting your hand up and uh, willing to do this. Again, well, it, yeah, it won't be a, a big stretch, but it's it's a fun thing. It's the Meadow Valley uh, uh, Rec District, um, and they have the fields over there. Which our um, part in the rest committee is a little less than than like Wakefield, Warren, or Faston. Um, we don't have, only voting is on the, um, the fields themselves. Other things that we kind of stay out of in that, in that area there. But anyways, um, anyone else? Questions for Mr. Rosenberg? I just hope you come to more fest. Oh, we will. <laughs> September 25th. We get, we get to hang out, right? Yeah, yeah. we'll be there. Very good, all right, so. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it starts on the Venus this afternoon. I was listening to that game driving up. Unfortunately, but um, 
So I would uh, move to uh, appoint uh, Sam Rosenberg to the Mad River Valley Rec District. Second. Second. John, we're going to give that to you. Uh, if there are no further questions, all in favor vote that. Aye. 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 All right, Sam, there you go. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to run now, too. Absolutely. Okay. It's been very good. All right, very thank nice you. to everybody. Thank you, guys. Nice to meet you. We'll see you on the 25th. We'll see you on the 25th. All right, nice. So, Joyce, we have you calming the traffic. These troopers came in to, once they heard you were on the agenda, you were going to calm the traffic. No. And so they wanted to learn. <laughs> Should I come up here? Yes, please. I'm sorry. Please, John. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hi. Hi George. Hi, George. So, calming the track. So this is this is an effort that's been going on for about six months, I think. I've been talking to John and Don about various issues in Moortown. And um, we've had lots of back and forth with various people at VTrans and at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. And I have sent a document. Oh, somebody has it. Somebody else has it. Oh, you all have yeah, it? Have you all have it? No. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So I tried to collect the most informative missives that I received in order to give you all the same information that I have. And I think what has to happen next is that you all have to decide what the priorities are. Because we can't do everything that's on this list. And everything, of course, takes a little bit of um, bureaucratic pushing. <laughs> so, uh, we can start with the easy one, maybe. I've been warned that there are people who would like to see a mirror at the intersection of 100B and the Moortown Mountain Road, where that crazy curve happens. Right, we had um, a guest last, our last meeting that came in and uh, asked about it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't okay. really pushed, so we look okay. to see what you think. Okay. Well, unfortunately, um, if you're thinking about putting a mirror in the state right of way, that cannot happen. Vtrans does not allow that. Um, and I noted here that they're worried about those mirrors because they can create glare, especially at night and because they can be confusing to drivers who don't know the intersection and can't tell where they're looking, <laughs> where the mirror is showing them. So they say. Okay, so there is a set of FAQs that talks about mirrors, and if you can get off the state right away, then you can install a mirror if, if that's what you want to do. So uh, that's a possibility. All right. Any questions or discussion of that? I don't think so. I don't think that was a mm -hmm. big priority of ours. Okay. Um, okay. Go. Okay. All right. So then we'll move on to some issues that came up through John and Don. And um, I finally got a good response from a new guy at VTrans, a guy named John Kaplan, who's the manager of the Bike and Ped program. So, um, Let's see, first off, there was this issue about a speed sign before the new bridge right down here on 100B. And at the time that I wrote, there was no sign and it was supposed to be there. And I was told that it was, I don't know, something happened to it, it was knocked down, but now it's been replaced. So this, the, the speed sign, 30 miles per hour, is now there. So that took care of one issue. Second issue was, well, okay, my numbering is not the best, but anyway. Then we talked about sidewalks and crosswalks and pedestrian safety in the village of Moortown. So there's lots of information here, and um, VTrans has its opinions about crosswalks and sidewalks and thinking that what's there is okay. Um, there is another project that's coming to do the sidewalk on the west side, far side, of 100B. And the question is, do we really need that sidewalk and do we want people crossing the road from one side to the other? So um, if you do want to change the 
the sidewalk project at this point, it would take some work. <laughs> um, it means undoing what's been done to set up that project, so that would take some work. If you want a different sidewalk in a different location or a, a crosswalk or whatever, then uh, I think Ian Degatis is the Degutis. Degutis, how do you say his name? Anyway. Ian Degutis may be the person to talk to. I think um, they're already uh, going to have that in their plans. The extra crosswalk across in the store of the town hall. I think Somewhere in that area, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or by the post office or... Yeah, so that's in the, the sidewalk plans. Okay. Actually, okay. Well, they did paint one here. I don't know if everybody noticed. They did paint a crosswalk right in front of the school. Yeah, that's oh, the, 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 the yeah, existing one. Yeah, yeah. The they did put that one and painted that one in the other day. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that's, that's good. All right. And, and I also... Um, someone was telling me that uh, Carrie Dolan is actually working or brought up some legislation that um, because there's a, apparently a, um, a regulation that you, in order to have a crosswalk you have to have two regular you know two sidewalks uh -huh. you know, regulation sidewalks yeah. and I guess she's brought up some legislation to see if that can change be that. changed that uh -huh. it can be a crosswalk without having a is that because so called right. Not, not, no, nothing to do with more uh -huh. sorry. Okay. You know, just, okay. I know Wastefields um, is working, they have a whole thing going on trying to work on traffic calming and transportation issues and stuff, and I don't know if that's where that came out mm -hmm. or not, but anyways, I just thought I'd throw that out there. So it hasn't passed? Oh, yeah. no, not that yeah. I know okay. of, no. Okay, I can check on that. Yeah, I can. Okay, that's interesting. All right. And then there was discussion of bike lanes. So there's a description here of what it takes to get a bike lane, um, minimum width of the bike lane, adjust, adjacent to curbing is five feet. So it talks about how you could configure the road um, if you wanted to put in a, a bike lane if there's room. When a paving project comes through, that would be a good time to add bike lane markings, which is, yes. So, um, Maybe VTrans is going to measure the next time they come through. So, I don't know if you want to push harder on this or or wait till they measure and see if I don't, it's I don't think this is going you to be You don't think it's wide enough? Not going to be 30 feet there. Yeah. No. Well, if the, if the sidewalk doesn't happen, then there could be a reconfiguration. Uh -huh. But the sidewalk is going to happen. Okay. All right, not looking good for bike lanes. Okay, so the next issue was a radar speed feedback sign, one of these signs that lights up and blinks at you if you're going too fast. And um, there is agency guidance about all that that I've put in at the end of this. Actually, it probably didn't print out for you because he's got a print out right, but you can find it on the on the website if you need to. Um, so it says there's already one of these speed signs, a blinking radar speed feedback sign, mm -hmm. north of the school for southbound traffic. Any additional sign, radar sign would be the responsibility of the town through an 1111 permit, blah, 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 the cost would be on the town. And you need to have a speed study first. So again, we're running into the little. Can I question on that? Yeah. So if there's already a sign, which we've had a speed study for to put that sign up. Yep. We've already justified putting up a speed sign. Why yep. would we need to do another speed study? Well, apparently they tell you they give you one. <laughs> they give one sign for study, yeah, even though it's the same road. Yeah. Going well, the other it, direction. Yeah, but I think the thing has to be where the where the study is. What's what's the same? It would have been right there at the school, and if we wanted to put one further south. On the other side of the bridge, we'd have to have that would be the location to do the study, which could be different. I don't see how it could be more than 30 miles per hour uh, in, in, entering into the. the well, curve. what about uh, the other um, part of this? The other idea, and I'm sorry, Joyce, I'm just skipping ahead on you, that we could move 
the yeah. existing site and relocate that. So the question is, would you have to have a speed study to relocate the site? I don't know. Yeah, I would imagine they would. Yeah. Probably so. Where, where are you? Where are we thinking we put? Will we put it all the way down by the bridge coming into town? Yeah, which is where it should be. Which is really where it should be. Yeah. And also make before Maynard's. And we, we move the one that's on the hill. There. Before yeah. Maynard's. Uh, well, somewhere up in that vicinity. Before the curve. I mean, it, it's very yeah. difficult. You you go by Maynard's. It's forty going by Maynard's, yeah. which is what that's what it is right now. And then you, you, you're seeing a sign that says um, 30 miles an hour ahead, you know, one of those warning signs. And that's really not until you get down the hill and you're almost to the cemetery, that's when you first start to see 30 mile an hour speed limit. But coming down that, you know, a car with momentum, unless you're really being a courteous driver, you're coming down the hill at 45, 40, 45, maybe and 50, so people are, coming past Freeman Hill Road and around that corner, these guys could probably attest to it, you know. So into the town at, at a good rate of speed until they see the, get to the flasher, right. you know. So maybe before, I think, if you put it before um, maintenance, they're gonna pick up that speed again going down. Right, down. Well, that's yeah. what I was yeah. So if you go around the corner before the Freeman Hill, the maybe. cemetery, maybe right before the cemetery on the right hand side, Although there's a curb there, you would think that would slow people down, but it, it really doesn't. doesn't really. Um, but if you see it at the top of the hill. Right, I mean, you're, you might be able to. So, Joyce, yeah, maybe we could see what kind of um, difficulty it would be to, to move those. Move it, we need studies. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I would think that if we had a, a warning sign, you know, that reduced food zone, before maintenance. Right, you could do well, that. that. Yeah, that might make sense. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm really I'm supportive of the radar speed feedback signs. I, I think they work, work well. I mean, I know, I know as myself, you know, I think they, they really catch your attention. And, right. You know, even if we have town has to invest in them, I think it's still a good investment. You know? mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I think one other thought, and I don't know if she was Joyce Howes, can ever be approached. I mean, it's going to take a long time before uh, we as a society come to grips with, with how we are in our cars and how we share the road or, and how we become courteous again. But even a meeting I went to once with uh, then Lieutenant Reverend Scott was speaking to this very same thing about courtesy, but the thing that I, I find very interesting is when you, if you have someone coming here and you come off of 89, you go through Middlesex Village, it goes from 40 to 35, and then you take the turn onto 100B and it's 35, and then you get down to about the dam and it goes to 50, and there's not another speed sign until you get to almost, your, to past your house, where it says to slow down to 40. So by the time people are getting there, they're, that's why so many cars go off the road there, as we know, in the, the curves, because they're coming into the curves so fast right. that, hello, on a snowy night there, you know, I look out my window, oh, there's another one. Um, but in any event, I wonder if something can be done even there, just on a, just the speeds on a 100B could be dealt with. I mean, maybe another sign that says 50 miles an hour somewhere along the way instead of it just, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I mean, I know besides asking for more patrol, you can only do so much to the sheriff and the state police. So anyways, it's just another comment in the traffic time discussion as far as traffic and... I mean, you're supposed to have the sign anytime there's a side road that comes out for people who turn onto the road. I don't know. Isn't that correct? I don't know. Uh, that's the way it was when we put up the village or the signs in the yeah. village. Yeah. Or, or not the village, all of Morton. Yeah, Morton, yeah. When we changed our speed limits, there's signs at every, I think, at every intersection. That's correct. And I thought it was the same way with the state. I don't know. But, uh, another thing with the, with the state roads is any 
any road that isn't posted is a 50 yeah. mile an hour zone. So mm -hmm. most of your most of your your state roads that are 50 aren't posted because it, it's it's in statute that an unposted road is automatically 50 miles an hour. So that's True. Okay. that's an issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a large issue. Yeah, your yeah. yeah. average Joe is in there. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. 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 More down mountain used to be 50 miles an hour, yeah. way before it was posted. So yeah. yeah. Now they're doing more seventy. <laughs> yeah, and, and to that gentleman's point, I, I, in the traffic calming discussion, down, you know, it's going to be a continual thing. You know, it's not all just tonight. You know, something to work on. I think, in the long run, if we as a board could try to help figure out how it, the traffic on our the, the speeds on our back on the dirt roads in our town and all the towns, it's just it's ridiculous how fast people drive on those roads. You know, 35 posted is someone's doing 40 or 45. And it's the, our society is, I mean, maybe it hasn't made sense if it ever did back in the 50s or 60s or something. But now, especially with COVID, our new world of COVID, people are running more and walking more and biking more and they're, they're out on the roads more. They're, and there's more families, there's more people on our, living on our roads. But our cars go faster, they smoother, you know, yeah, I mean, the bumps, you know, you know, you've got, so. And it, it also translates it to the cost of upkeeping our roads, because the higher speeds on the roads tear up the road, so it's. It's a constant, yeah, no, I think it's you a know, And I know I've been told that you can't lower the speeds on our roads without going through a whole thing with the state and doing a traffic study, and it's $35,000, and it's, you know, but the whole thing is. Travis, the state should take Quick question about the signs. Um, do, do we ever go back over these roads to see if they're properly sign, signage? Like uh, Ray was speaking about, like every intersection has been brought up tonight. Do they ever go back like after they've been s put signs up and to make sure they're still properly signed everywhere? I think we leave it up to our, our road farmer to oh, his inspection of the roads. Uh, I think here in town, yeah. Martin, both guys, I can't speak for the, the state if there's an auditor that goes out on those, but uh, Martin or any of the crew, they're really usually typically pretty good, or, or someone that in the community says, hey, someone knocked a sign over. Um, we don't, there's no uh, SOP as far as this what they do on a yearly basis or something. Well, I've noticed a few signs that were been down for years, you know, and the posts and stuff are still there. But the sign is. Well, you don't have to do it. Let us. Yeah, let us know. Let us know where they are. You know, we do count on community input. You know, somebody sees something wrong. Or, yeah. No, we're happy to take a look at it and see what the sign was and if it needs to be redone. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Joyce. Let's move on to Gallagher Acres. Gallagher Acres, right? So the issue here is that there are lots of families living in Gallagher Acres. There's no way to walk from Gallagher Acres into Waterbury. And you would think that there might be some demand for that. So, um, yes, they're saying it seems reasonable to think that you might want sidewalks there. Um, you have to put the sidewalk in the highway, state highway right away. So you have to get a state highway access permit from VTrans. Uh, they did look at that, <coughs> and they do think that there's space for a sidewalk, so that's a good thing. Um, I've actually walked that bunch trying to get <laughs> to Snowfire after I get off the bus, the non-transit bus, and it's all horrible. It's horrible because there's no place to walk. Okay. Yeah, and it's also, there's another road there. Um, Fairground. Fairground. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's folks in there too, right? Yep, oh, absolutely. Yes. So, um, they're suggesting that we try for the bike ped grant program, the small scale bike ped grant program, which does not require scoping study, so that's good. That cuts down the time a little bit. The next round of that is, is uh, April 2022, so it gives time to prepare for that a little bit. And they're saying that we could probably get um, help from CBRPC if we wanted to move on that. There's another alternative, which is um, the transportation alternatives program, but they don't have a small, small scale program, so they're recommending that we try the bike path. 
Um, they do say that getting some scoping and feasibility study of the sidewalk might be a good idea so that we know something about the construction cost and the feasibility. But um, certainly, if, if you want to move forward with that, I can talk to the Regional Planning Commission folks and see how to line things up to get it moving. No, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. That area yeah. definitely needs it. Um, yeah. We have a lot of people who've been there in the last few years. And, and if you can keep um, Cheryl Lynn copied on your correspondence, because she will typically, I mean, she, not typically, she is the one uh, doing the um, grant stuff for us. So that she's aware of what's going on. That would be a, a good start over there. Okay. Uh, right, so I, I included some earlier emails, but basically they're talking about this sign down by the bridge that disappeared and now it's reappeared, so that's there. Um, so there's plenty of information and, and uh, lots of, you know, <laughs> lots of bureaucratic stuff to think about if, if you want to push forward with any of these. But what I've got on my list is investigate moving the radar speed sign closer to the maintenance, right? You know, Oh, uh, by just by yeah. Yeah, between Maynard's and Freeman Hill, let's say that. Okay. Not to go over that bridge, you think? Yeah, maybe we can all take a walk down sometime for a drive together and see where we're going to Maybe the troopers might have some suggestions on that. I was, I was thinking along your lines with that sharp curve there at People can only go so fast through that, but if you're saying they're continuing on past there, it might be good. I think you said back before the new bridge there, as they come down, that's probably, I think, earlier the better. Yeah. As opposed, because most people, you know, even myself included, it's like, you don't want to be the one that's going fast when there's cars behind you. You're like, you don't want to be the one setting that thing no, off. That's, yeah. So it's almost the, the sooner you can get the momentum if there's a line of cars coming out of the valley, I think that's probably your best bet. So whatever you think's the good spot, back it up a little more. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. that's kind of it's good my, my philosophy. And on the north side here, what would you think? I'm trying to just trying to think of the geography there. Are you saying as people come, so you come around the, the bridge, the bridge there, and, and they just continue on? Yeah, they start smoking it. It's through. Yeah, it's a pretty flat stretch right through there by the garage and all that. Before the sand pit. Before the sand pit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would say maybe just past the bridge. I mean, just on this side of the bridge, throw it there because you have the S curves and then the bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe by the efforts there or something. Yeah. 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 Oh. He's been called worse. No, <laughs> I've called him worse. And also, just to, just to throw something out, if you guys are, are looking at doing additional speed studies, um, I know several communities have um, portable signs that they can actually move rather easily that are either battery operated. I think most of them are battery operated. You, you recharge them. You affix a, a frame to a sign, and you can actually move them in different places. So one sign could actually, you know, you could have it on the north end of the village at one point, and for a couple of days, and then recharge it and take it down to the, the southern end. And it's as long as you're doing speed studies, it, it, it might behoove you to do one on either end of the village at the same point if the town is purchasing one sign. Um, have make it one that's that's capable of being moved to either end of the village and that way you mm -hmm. kind of get a little bit more bang for your buck and you get two locations where you can put up your speed sign uh, but only have one sign obviously there's one sign in one spot but um, at a time but you can you can move it back and forth there's there's several several uh, village areas that I'm aware of that do that exact same thing it's a it's an aluminum um, fixture that's on the sign and they just put it in there, you bolt it in real quick and, and you're you're off and running and you're out for another couple of days, you take it down, you recharge it overnight and you can put it in the other spot. So do they do they record data or do they just um, I think some of them are are capable of doing that, but I believe they're gonna be like your fixed signs that have like the, the solar panels and things that are that are more constant that have the ability to to plug into those. Um, 
but there there could be some some updated technology out there that allows you to capture data on those on those portal walls. So who's responsible for moving the sign after two days, charging it up and moving it down the road? Uh, I know. Hotel? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the road foreman or you know someone someone in the town with a with a vested interest in and in moving it around. Hmm. Sasha would do that first. <laughs> <laughs> Get her something else. Get her outside. So, the so you can put that as conceivably on a on a dirt back dirt road as well. Like Anywhere, yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah, that's why I was thinking the same thing. Is you yeah. can put it around them. Get several poles and so does the state rent those to the towns or is it something the town would have to? Uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be purchased, the, the town would purchase those, yeah. Do you guys have access to the mobile ones that we, we see? We do, yep. Uh, obviously there's a, there's a pretty good demand across the, the 18 that. towns that we cover, so we, we rotate it through, but that's definitely something that, that we can put uh, more time in the rotation for sure. All right. We'll finish up here with Joyce and then we'll Get you guys for a couple minutes. I'm sure. Great. Right, so I think I'm done. Yep. All right, so um, I won't hear back from you. You're always good about that. We appreciate that, Joyce. Okay. I have a few things on my list. Okay, very good. Very good. Thank right. you. Thank you so much Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Sure. Yeah, thanks so much for looking into all of it. Yeah, very right. good. Spend the time meeting with everyone. Sure. No problem. We'll see you at Morfest. All right. All right. Uh, so moving on, we have um, Vermont State Police. We have uh, Lieutenant White and Trooper Stackhouse. Yeah. You guys want to roll forward here? Sure. First, uh, again, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> these are quick. <laughs> you embrace everybody. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I'm the chip here. Uh, thanks guys again for coming. We have uh, a couple things we want to um, bring up. First, uh, um, traffic coming as you've heard, some, some speeding issues that we're having. And then uh, Callie and Ray wanted, and the whole board, that they're looking at um, ATVs and usage in the, uh, in the town mm -hmm. and perhaps opening up a road or something. So we want to get your opinions on that, you know, what you thought. So. Um, but starting off, uh, and also when we're speaking with the, with the speeding, uh, I guess one of the first things is right now we, we don't have coverage only uh, with what you guys can afford to do and with 18 towns and probably, I don't know how many people short you are, if you are people short, you know, it's probably a limited time that you can come through here. Um, so one of the things when you get back to the office is maybe you can put a proposal together for uh, if, you, if you're doing that hours uh, in addition to what you're so it doing on like a contract. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, on a contracted basis. We've done that in the past with the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. um, but we'd like to see kind of what you guys have and you're right close by or close by for the immediate future anyways. Sure, yeah. Out of yeah. Town at some point. Right. Um, but maybe you can share a little bit about what you do in town and then we can just ask some questions there. Yeah, so um, we ran some numbers uh, just in the last, from, from um, August of last year to August of this year, just to kind of give you a, a you know, 12 month snapshot of what's, what we've been responding to in Moortown. Um, so in that one year uh, snapshot, we had uh, 190 calls for service um, in the town of Moortown. Um, and of note, 102 of those are thus far in 2021. So the first eight months of 2021 has captured more than half of those, um, of those calls for service. Um, on the, the motor vehicle side of things, um, We've had, we had nine motor vehicle complaints, most of which were in the winter time for vehicles off the road or, or uh, things like that. Um, issued 38 warnings and 21 tickets uh, within the town of Moortown. Um, and of the 190 calls, uh, we had arrested eight folks from everything from stalking, uh, three DUIs, restraining order violations, uh, theft, disorderly conduct, and domestics. So um, a whole gamut of, 
of types, different types of calls um, here in town in the last year. Um, and, you know, just, uh, just to speak on kind of, you know, where, where we're at, um, you know, not, not unlike any other law enforcement agency or any other barracks throughout the state or throughout the country right now, we're experiencing staffing shortages. Um, the biggest majority of us um, of, for Middlesex is we've got three folks that are deployed uh, currently and aren't due back until at least February or March of 2022. Uh, we have uh, one individual who was away on uh, four months of extended training, but when, when she returns, the entire area will benefit because she's training up a new canine. So um, oh, nice. our, our former canine handler um, retired her dog and it now has a new dog, so they're going through basic training. So we will be back up online here towards the end of the year, at least for tracking and then um, Early next year, February, March time, should be gone for another six weeks for uh, drug training, but then uh, the dog will be up fully online for, you know, we'll have our, um, our canine asset back at the barracks. And then above and beyond that, we have uh, two, two outstanding vacancies um, at the barracks, which, like I said, brings us to six, which um, in retrospect, that's a little more than one quarter of our, of our workforce. Um, on on the average on a weekly basis uh we have we we have between 42 and 48 shifts that we cover so that's about three people per shift and so with those three people per shift we're we're covering 18 towns plus uh the interstate from waterbury down to roxbury so mm -hmm. It's uh, we're, we're stretched pretty thin right now, but um, I think you know, like I said, it's it's not unique to to Middlesex. Uh, everyone across um, Vermont and across the country is having staffing issues right now. Um, so the the good thing is we have uh, we're slated for one one individual graduating the the basic academy on Friday, and um, due to COVID, the the academy had kind of had to shift. Normally they do two classes uh, every year, one in January and one in July. With COVID, they had to, uh, to cut that back, so they started in May. Um, so in, originally in 2021, they were, calendar year 2021, they were only expecting to put one uh, class through. They're actually starting another one right off in October. Um, right now we have 17 people that are signed up to go into that class. So. Uh, overall, just the state police, we, you know, it's going to take us a while to get back, but at least uh, the academy is helping us out by, by going ahead and jump-starting and kind of class great. really quick. So, um, and then it'll be, you know, having, having state police put 17 through, that, that accounts for over half of the, the normal complement of the academy class. So, um, we're taking up as many space, spots yeah. as we can get with the hopes that Come February, March, they'll kick off another class, and then hopefully by the end of 2022, maybe we'll be on the same, back on the same uh, schedule as having two classes a year, which, you know, it, it doesn't sound like much when you say, oh, well, we've only missed one class the last two years, but when you think about, well, that's that's an additional 12 bodies that we don't have just in, in, yeah. in the state police, much less the rest of the, the state, so... Um, it accounts for a lot, and that's that's without the normal attrition of, of retirements and people looking elsewhere and going to the feds and different stuff like that. So, which we've had our fair share of. Um, so, it's a little grim right now, but uh, we're we're looking for the lighter the light at the end of the tunnel. So we're we're headed in the right direction at least. Well, good. I mean, it's 190 calls that actually shocked me. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna add. That's probably a lot lower than a normal year because we experienced during COVID that the call volume, although the the severity of the calls was, I think there was more family fights, you know, more DUI crashes, but there was much less last year. So I would say in a normal year, I should have looked into that and maybe 2019 stat, but I, I would guess maybe it was cut in half. But. Yeah. I think that's that's a pretty low number, and it's it's kind of shocking to think, oh, just more little more town, you know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate what you guys do. Sure. I mean, it's, thank you. It's a hard job, and yeah. um, we certainly appreciate what you do.
Thank you. Thank you. But that's that is what the the trend was throughout the country. That COVID, the whole shutdown of COVID, really brought on a lot more. Yeah, we um, just we just found that there's people, a lot yeah. more stuff going on in people's houses, and D people weren't and getting and out, and so for sure. <laughs> well, we have certainly lots of challenges. That we, you know, especially when you tell me we had that many calls. Um, you know, certainly. When you are going through, speeding is a is a priority here. I mean, it's one of the things that really. Uh, if you heard different people talk here tonight. I mean, that's you know, I guess that's the one thing that's visual too. We don't see sure, sure. ninety calls. Um, so you know, in that contract, that's what we'd be looking mm -hmm. for, and not just in the village areas, but in sure. in the back roads. Mm -hmm. um, Watch one of us get pulled over. Oh, no, I, it, it, it happens. It happens. We, we do the contract for East Montpelier, and I've met a lot of people the first time on the side of the road. You know? yeah. Yeah, you, uh, it's one of those things that I think we all tried it. But that, that's why those, those blinking signs saved me. I'm I, on the road all the time, mm -hmm. and not I don't try to speed, but just sometimes you're not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. Village and so yeah. I think those yeah. are very effective. Yeah. Um, so the other thing, and maybe Kelly and Ray, you guys want to talk about it, is the uh, ATV uh, ordinance that we're thinking of, or roads that we're thinking of opening, and what you guys' thoughts are on that, and your experience in different areas. Mm -hmm. So one of you guys want to tell them kind of where we're thinking of doing that, and what's going on, Ray? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, it seems like you know, more and more towns are letting ATVs and UTVs on the roads, and uh, we, you know, more town, uh, particularly I live on the Jonesburg area. Um, there's a lot of class three roads connected to class four roads, you know, uh, so there's a fair amount of ATV traffic on the roads, and um, even now, even though they're not supposed to be there, uh, and it, I'm of the feeling that, you know, that, you know, making them making an ATV ordinance and enforcing it is better off than where we are today, excuse mm -hmm. me, which is, you know, it, it, most, I, I can honestly say, I think most of the riders in that area are, we're out just story riding and, you know, the older people like myself, but there is a lot of people that come in from like Barrie and ride the other roads up there and it gets a little, little wild at times. Mm -hmm. But that's not the only problem. It's, you know, a lot of problems also with Jeeps and other big, uh, eight, it's big trucks as sure. well. So um, I guess I'm looking for a little you know, feedback. From, you know, what is? You, have you experienced any towns that have the ATV ordinance thus far? And how, how is it working out for you? Or do you guys partake in the enforcement, or is that fish and wildlife? Uh, so it, my, I guess my first question is. Are these the the roads that you're looking at? Do they link up like the Vasa Trail system uh, in no. any way? No, mm, they don't. No. So the Fish and Wildlife Vasa actually is contracted through has contracted Fish and Wildlife to enforce uh, the laws on the Vasa trails. Mm. So the ATV violations and stuff like that, unless they happen right in front of us, they're typically not something that, that we deal with. We don't have ATVs, so we don't have any, the, the, AT, the UTVs that we have are for search and rescue or you know, just different stuff. We don't, we don't have anything that's, that's kind of tied in for, um, for patrolling that sort of stuff. Um, snowmobiles is a little bit different, but um, the, the ATV stuff, we don't we don't even have an outlet to patrol that that's that's um, that's all fishing game so just knowing that if there isn't any link to the the vasa system i don't know how that would how that would uh translate into enforcement um not sure if the if the game wardens would would be up to coming coming in and and enforcing that stuff um so that would be the first thing is to, if you are gonna open roads to just, I would, I would suggest that they actually link up some of your trail systems to, to, keep, to keep the riders off of, to keep them within certain areas to, to access the trails. Um, 
Otherwise, you know, to even to to drive anywhere outside of anyone's property, it has to be registered and inspected. Um, and from a, a town, I would certainly, you know, mandatory helmets, uh, posted speed limits, uh, that sort of thing. But again, there's no way to really enforce that, uh, which is, again, an issue. Um, places that I, I've known about, that, that I know about, that have had town roads that are, that are open, um, it, it's, uh, it becomes like a racetrack. Uh, after dark, when when people start getting their adult beverages in them and and decide to uh, to see how fast their razor one thousands will go down a down a road, um, and you know it just it, it it typically will generate a lot more complaints about about that from anyone who resides on those roads, um, just late night driving. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've had several fatals in Washington yeah. at yeah. least. At least two that I know of with ATVs up in the notch in Washington. So, again, that late night party, and that's, and, and you mentioned maybe it, let's regulate it because it's happening, you know, yeah. either way. I like the philosophy. Um, yeah. But I think I was at a fatal off at Jonesbrook Road, one of the roads on the right where ATV crashed a couple of years ago and went off the road. He was going from his, uh, like, his barn through his own trail on the property and then was heading back down towards Jonesbrook and he went off the road and died. Mm. Um, I don't recall that. Five or six years yeah, ago. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, just non-registered, no helmet, drinking, you know, mm. went off the road. But, um, I, and I'm thinking of Washington again as far as um, dirt bikes and, and ATVs and neighbors calling non-stop and, and they want it to end, you know? And, they want us to come down and magically make it, it stop, but yeah, it's... See, and that's, again, I guess that's the whole crux of the whole thing, why we were thinking of having, you know, making it legal, because, you know, we, we've tried to put signs up, we've tried everything to try to keep people, you know, it's private property too, yep. and they go off there, and then they go off on the private property, and they're destroying that. So the idea is, well, maybe if we have law, you know, but it doesn't really sound like it can be really enforced. So, yeah, so. that's the that's the probably the, the biggest thing is the, the enforcement portion of it. The only the only problem with with uh, hooking up with Vassa, let's say, and I like Vassa, but uh, then it gets on their um, their state maps or whatever, mm -hmm. and then yep. it becomes a, a, a magnet, sure. or an area for people. Yep. From out of town yeah, to come to, more people. and more, with and more yeah, people. Yeah, with that people. association, you're going to get more. Lynch Hill is already a magnet. Yeah. I mean, my property is bordered by Lynch Hill on one side and Herringbrook on the other. Oh yeah. And it's yeah. it's yeah. a circle. Yeah. All the way around, and especially there's one set of kids up the road that come down and. Sure. Half yeah. the time, I mean, one kid basically said. I ride from Northfield over here on my dirt bike. Yeah. yeah. And he's 15. Yeah. 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 So, but they come and just like back and forth. Sure. Yeah. I'm thinking of one kid in particular in Washington who's probably generated 30 calls for us this year with, uh, you know, ATVs. So, so you're suggesting probably your best alternative if we want enforcement is VASA. Went through is that well, I, I mean, it's it's a, a double-edged sword. You know, at least through VASA, you can you at least have an enforcement outlet um, because they are contracted with with Fish and Wildlife. Um, but you know, it, with that comes you know you know VASA. Now they they all of their trails are loaded into the the latest Polaris right. coming in. You know, it, it goes right into the GPS. For the, the you know those expensive players right yeah. you mm -hmm. know it's right in there um so it's it, it's, it's you know it's difficult because uh, there are none of us like myself who just like to ride around and, yeah you know don't yeah. want our truck riding around right yeah like a four wheeler and, I, I would i would certainly you know if just establish you know some sort of uh you know a, a speed limit um, and just some some very strict requirements, um, you know, for helmets and stuff like that. 
you know, it just, and it, go ahead. I was just even have Chad there come in. And, yes. And see what he thinks. Yeah, I, I would highly recommend that. You know, obviously he would he would probably know a lot better than I. You know how yeah. what steps would have to be taken to to get that that VASA. He's fishing. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. He's, I think I know one of the guys at VASA too. Yeah, but they yeah. must be stretched. Yeah, they they have a huge trail system. They must be stretched just as thin as to try to do enforcement. I mean, you know, they must. I wonder what the trade-off is, you know, you, you get tied into the system, but they don't really, I mean, how much can they really enforce another section, so to speak? Yeah, well, I think it's probably good to speak with them to see what yeah. his thoughts yeah. are for sure. before you jump into it. That's what we always think, you know, yeah. Awesome. Right. yeah, and, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm from the eastern side of the state, so, you know, if, if you haven't already talked to towns like Topsum that have been... And have, they've had their their town roads open for for years, and just see kind of how they how they got into it. Um, you know, most of, most of my experience with with uh, the racetrack and and having that stuff running at all hours of the nights is, is over there, over that way. You know, but a lot of their town, some of their town roads are are paved roads, so you can get a you can get a razor one thousand going pretty quick until it hits that telephone pole. And, yeah. 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 Or it's somebody else. Or yeah. it's somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And then some of them aren't registered apparently either. That's the well, other thing. Most of them aren't. What? Most of them aren't. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's not like they can inspect them for the road anyway, right? No, but uh, they at least have to be registered and inspected unless you're driving on your, your private property, your own personal property. So um, just uh, to, if if we lived right here and I wanted to, to cross... 100B, I would have to have it registered and inspected just to, just across the road legally. And cross it roughly 90 degrees. 90 degree angles, angles yeah. And there was someone on, on uh, River Road the other day that I saw that was driving them without any registration, just, you know. Mm -hmm. well, it's, well, it was like those plates do fall off. Well, maybe. I, 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 All right. <laughs> uh, any other questions for the uh, gentleman while we have them here? Just a quick one, and I think you already answered this. Do you have um, any authority your, for your department on class four roads or legal trails to like pursue or do any, or is that fishing game like? Uh, well, we mentioned? yes, we we can, but it's um, you know we we have authority everywhere in Vermont, but it's uh, you know you have to be you have to be right there when it's when it's happening. Uh, but we will not pursue any, any ATVs under no circumstances. Very good. How do you get a cruise down some of those roads, I guess, huh? What's that? How do you get a cruise down some of those trails? Well, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised where you could squeeze a... I've squeezed the Crown Vic in the long place. Did you get it out? Yeah. I did that. Well, we really appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy yeah, yeah, yeah. dinner hour or whatever. Come of course. Here. And um, it's good to have a kind of a face to the name again. Sure. Uh, we've yeah. been here before, Lieutenant. Appreciate it. Uh, Trooper Stackhouse. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Any any follow up questions that pop up, feel free to email either one of us. And as far as the town contract stuff, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. I can uh, I can get something to you for you guys on that just to kind of show you where. Where we're at for for numbers and things like that. So. Yep, yep, that would be great. Good. Good. Right. You guys have okay. a nice start shoot the week with us? I do in my car. I can grab. Uh, yeah, that would be good that way. Sure. So yeah, we have yeah. your email address. Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank, right. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing thank you for what you do. Yeah. Thank you for. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank sure. you. Yep. All right. So moving along. Chuck, how are you tonight? Well, how are we all doing? All right, so what you want to go on? Go at the big table. Yeah, the big table. Big people table. All right, I see you all got the crew here. That's fantastic. Um, I am not going to go through this in detail. Uh, it's a lot of actually repeat material from the last time I was here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to kind of highlight what's changed since I was last here, and then we can we can get to the, the meat of it. Um, 
So a couple, couple of major things have happened since I was in here in June. First of all, we have launched our high-level design initiative. The idea of this is a design across our, you guys mind if I do this, I'm vaccinated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have launched our high-level design across the entire uh, district. Obviously, we are focusing on certain areas first as the underserved people, but we do want to make sure we're building something that would be viable across what at the time was our 20 communities. Since then, Waterbury has actually joined, so Waterbury is now part of the community, which is good because it gets us access to some areas in Duxbury that were going to be a little bit challenging before. Um, and uh, as part of that, there's still the poll inventory, which I was talking about last time I was here, um, and that is kicking off any day now. We're just waiting for a grant to hit our bank account. And it, as often happens, got held up a bit in the state and, and was waiting on somebody to hit, you know, approve, and, and that hadn't happened, but it had been approved. Uh, so that has now been issued, and we're just waiting for that to hit our bank account. We're hitting go, and we're going to start seeing trucks with CV Fiber's logo out doing this poll inventory. Um, since then, we have also announced our first towns that we are focusing on. As I indicated in the last meeting, Moortown is one of them, but we are focusing on Worcester, Middlesex, Moortown, Callis, and East Montpelier as our first areas of fifth. Um, they represent the towns that, one, make a nice contiguous network, two, uh, have a great deal of underserved population. Um, Middlesex, Middlesex in particular has a great deal of, of underserved population. Moortown doesn't have as high uh, a population, but is part of a, a good balance of good network design, along with the fact that it's the north end of our town that is particularly, particularly underserved. Um, and uh, we also had really high interest rates. People who were surveyed were very, very interested in, in Moortown and, and said they would definitely subscribe. And, and um, I think you know, there's some population demographics in effect in Moortown that, that make that the case. Um, so the last thing I do want to call out is there's actually a map in the presentation on slide 11 that will actually show you a map of the areas that are considered underserved in Moortown specifically. Um, so if you did get a color printout, you'll see that the, uh, the houses with blue dots are served at the 25 slash 3 megabit per second or better um, that is the FCC definition of broadband, or actually I think yeah, 25.3. We are looking to try to get 100-100, and there are a number of town, um, areas in the town that do even have 100-100, but all of those red dots are the people who have access to 10-1 or worse. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, most of the more town common road is 4-1 or worse. Um, and so uh, with that, I'm pleased to announce that actually more town common road is going to represent one of our pilot projects where we do our one of our first builds. Uh, there are a few reasons for that, and I wish I could say I, I was personally responsible for that. I'm not. Uh, fate's aligned, and um, a lot of it has to do with some CARES Act funding that is likely to be coming through before the end of this year uh, to allow us to do that build out. Um, so that's kind of everything that's changed. Uh, we've refined some of the, the numbers in here in terms of the figures and costs. Um, they haven't changed that dramatically, so you know, if you look back at the last presentation versus this presentation, you'll see that the numbers are fairly similar, certainly in the same ballparks. Uh, I think when I came in here, I mentioned um, full-on uh, poll data and design uh, would be somewhere in the ballpark of 66,000. I think we've refined that to about 73,000 now. Um, and so the next steps here are, you know, if the town is still interested in perhaps directing ARPA funding towards our direction as a, as a potential um, uh, build out for community infrastructure, uh, we would love to get into that conversation. To that end, we passed you a memorandum of understanding that we drafted. Uh, it is worth noting both Middlesex and East Montpelier have uh, hired the same attorney to review that draft on behalf of them. Uh, I forget the gentleman's name at this point in time. I will pass that on to the board. Um, but there could be an opportunity for the town to save some money. Uh, I can tell you there have been some pretty substantial changes to the MOU on behalf of those towns. Um, um, in my personal opinion, I think they're good changes, even though they're representing the other side, so to speak. Uh, but I, I do think they're better for the towns and, and better for everyone involved. And so 
Um, if you were to piggyback off of that, that would save the town some money in terms of getting it reviewed. Um, so I guess the, the ask today would be to see if the board wants to move forward with something like this or what other sort of questions I can answer or information I can maybe provide you over the course of the, the next two weeks if you wanted to defer it for two weeks from today and, and make it done. How much were you asking for the 73000 Is that what you're asking for? Today, uh, you know, I, I do know the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has, has put out some statements around uh, how they believe towns should be using this money. Um, and, you know, as is typical, they're, at, they're advising a conservative stance, and I think that's smart. Um, so I would say it would be great if we could get that as a first tranche, if you will. Um, come six, eight months, if other opportunities haven't come before the board that seem as compelling, maybe you, you could consider a little more in our direction. But uh, for today, that would get us through the whole audit and design uh, for more towns specifically. So are you saying, uh, like, you're expecting the town of Moortown total cost to be $2 million? Absolutely. To the town? Yep. And this is money that we won't get back directly. The town will not get this money back through any part of the fees or anything like that. This is just investment money from the town for the community. With one caveat, which is more money that we get that doesn't come with debt service means we are able to have lower subscription rates for all of our subscribers. But we would spread that across the yeah. town. So, but there's no direct like fee on no. top of the fees that goes back to more town and say. Not, not on this, no. Um, I will remind you that as part of joining CB Fiber, there was uh, an obligation to be willing to lease some space for some equipment at which you would be able to retract some fees on that, but it's gonna be very minor in the grand scheme things. Um, yeah. So folks that already have, have a, are in the blue dot, the blue dot of people that have a problem right now. Correct. Yes. Uh, and so then they're, they're, it's probably hard to they switch over, they wouldn't, I mean, those folks aren't going to switch over, by, you know, or... They could. But they won't be in the in the poll in that, how would they be able to, they couldn't switch over unless that zone got into your system. So we are doing poll inventory across the entire district regardless of whether people are served or underserved. Um, our aim is to eventually serve everybody in our districts and just give them another opportunity for competitive choice as well. But that's not our priority. Our, our first priority is the people who need it most. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the people in the, in, in the southern end of town that have Waitsfield, Champlain, Valley Telecom, um, it would probably be five, six years, best case scenario, before we're lighting it up, unless they happen to live in a space that we have to cut across to bridge to places that are underserved. Um, and it is worth noting that we are in conversations with Waitsfield, Champlain, Valley Telecom, actually be our operator. Um, part of this is we have to establish the company that's actually going to have the infrastructure to, you know, have line people out there to fix things when they come down and stuff like that. And, well, and so, so it might be that. It might be that. There, there are other, a few other people who are, are oh, vying yeah, for it sure. as well. But to, to raise question, is that so certainly the people who are on the service, you know, yeah, I mean, I know people during the COVID thing, they were sitting in their cars in the middle of the winter to appear at the, or the town hall. So I do get it that it needs to happen, but the people who already have it, so they're, they'll be contributing, but still, you know, not being, they won't be a subscriber, but they're contributing as a member of the town. So I'm just, like when know. I pay my school tax. I'm not right. kidding. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. I, and I'm not saying that's no, a bad thing, that. but yeah. that's, you know, yeah. some people might say like, well, you know, hey, what's going on here? You know, I don't know. I'm just yeah. it's, it's an important call out. Yeah. You know, I don't, um, I don't know how that. And some, is, some communities have this consideration, some don't. Again, as I mentioned, Middlesex it has a much larger percentage of their population that's underserved compared to us. We do also have member communities in Barry City and Montpelier, where you have 95% served. Wow. Um, now, are we going to build there anytime soon? No. 
and we've been transparent about that. But oh yeah, because right, it doesn't pay off yet. Right? Yep. yep. Hmm. Um, is, is the state taking any role in this, or? We have yes. applied for grants from the state as well and received some, yes. Um, and there's probably going to be more to come. Um, as the overall project uh, was calculated to be about $50 million before we added Waterbury, uh, it's not like we were going to get that much money from the state, but we, are, mean, we are going to get some. I mean, now with the, I don't think they have not even finally passed, but the infrastructure bill, there could be funding through that. Yes. I mean, I, right now we're talking about the American recovery money, but so the infrastructure, that's one of the things they're talking about is, we, we are optimistic that yeah. we will have some opportunities there. Yeah, sure. okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the other towns um, that you brought proposals to, are they, um, are they giving their, their full, what you're asking for, or what's, what's been the reception so far? It's been positive. Um, Middlesex did talk a little bit about whether they wanted to give the full amount to us. They haven't committed to that yet, um, nor would I expect that to happen quickly because it's a large amount of money. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they're the only town, to my knowledge, that's talked about diverting the whole thing to us. Um, I think East Montpelier was going to do a, a pretty sizable portion, uh, but we do have some communities that are not in our area A that, that we're approaching as well, such as Marshfield, Plainfield, uh, other areas where there are high underserved populations that we want to get the ball rolling as well. Right. I have I mean, a question. Callus. Callus, yep. Yep. 539. Um, so as everyone recalls, we have about $165,000 uh, currently through the um, American Recovery Act um, funds. We have a couple of years to spend this. Um, and there's, I've, Spent uh, some time on a, a couple different conference calls where we went over. There's a lot of uh, strings that you know, and uh, I's to dot and T's to cross when you're when you're making these allocations. Um, and so I think what I want to make sure is everyone around the board has taken an opportunity and gets. Uh, and I'll have Sasha pass on the um, link. For the uh, and it's a document. There's a, a few different documents there. It's, it's VLT, VLCT has them, or VLCT. Um, and you can go through and read to the best of your knowledge what their legal team has put together for us. Um, it's not very exciting reading, so don't get too excited about it. But I think it's important that we know where it can go throughout the town. Um, you know, because a lot of times, or I've been approached through. You know, different towns people say, Hey, can you take that money and put it into this road or put it into this road? And those are the things that actually we can't do. Um, so it's it's best that we have this knowledge. So when we start allocating money to the CB fibers of the world or such, that um, this is why we're doing it and this is why we can't do it. And some of these might be other obvious spots where people would say, Why don't you take this money and put it here or lower the tax rate or something like that? There's there's a lot of places you can put it, but really there's just a few that are available to us here in Moortown. Um, and I think if we all have a good idea of that, and it'll be more comfortable uh, looking at these type of proposals when they come in, because you can see, although it's a lot of money, there's the options are, are somewhat limited of what we, we have to do. Um, I think it's, it's a good project, uh, you know, certainly with the pandemic. Uh, Illustrated to all of us the need for uh, connectivity, whether it's school, work, social um, meetings um, like this. So, uh, you know, I, I, Chuck, what I would like to do is, is uh, if, if not the next meeting, give us a month um, so that we can take, you know, some time. I know, uh, I'm busy the next week, so I really want to make sure that we get this right. Uh, get Cheryl in, the treasurer, involved as well. <clears throat> She's handing out and doling out the funds. And um, so I want to make sure she's comfortable with what we're doing as right. well. Because she signs off and she's responsible. So of course. Uh, she wants to make sure too. But um, what do you guys think? Is that a good plan? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, so uh, good. In the meantime, is there anything I can provide that will help in your discovery of, of this space? Okay. Uh, my only question is, you know, how much we can allocate without a vote from the without bulk. Uh, you know, I, I understand. My understanding is, if, we, if it's on the budget, if it's over five thousand dollars or whatever, we have to we have to have a vote or something from to to spend any money. But, Am I not correct on that, or? We'll have to look, give a legal opinion on that too, right? That's yeah. a good, I hadn't, to be very honest with you, I really hadn't put it in that perspective. Um, I mean, we're getting near the end of the year. I mean, we could actually put it in the budget if we wanted to go that way for next year. As it's not in the budget this year, I'm just I'm wondering briefly what we, what we can do. Right, good question to ask. We'll, um, you mean with the AFPA funds, or? Well, with any of the funds, I think, you know, if, the, if, if these funds are only 168000 that still leaves us with, you know, $1.8 million. Right, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and how we're going to do that. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm in support of the project. I just got to really think about how we're going to, to pay for it legally. Yeah, I, I can tell you that they're definitely has to be some sort of difference in how these are accounted for from typical funds because we are not legally allowed to dip into tax revenues from the towns. Mm -hmm. It is actually forbidden based on the legislature. However, this is allowed. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to articulate on why. You know, it's not tax and it's the recovery funds are right. Oh, the recovery recovery funds are right. right. But then there's going to be still funding after that. I mean, Yep, and we're going to be going for revenue bonds and all sorts of areas of funding. That right, that two see. million that Chuck talked about—they're not presenting us with a bill for two million. Right. right. Um, that's what the cost is here in town. Where they're getting that revenue? Yeah, they'd like to get it all from us, but they—they they know they're not. Uh, Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we could potentially come through the seventy-three for this first phase, and then you might need another. About a year from now. Yep. Um, and depending on what we have for money, and, and they've done, and I was going to ask them where they get the, this amount, but there is county money that is available. Um, and what the problem had been is when the uh, federal government allocated that money, they were looking at counties. There's a lot of counties in the, in the United States that are working governments. Um, and so there was money to the counties and the towns. Well, obviously here in the state of Vermont, we don't have county governments that are working. So uh, just recently, I just saw it in the last couple of weeks, there is a solution, there has been uh, a solution to that for states that govern like we do. I don't know, you know, how they would want to break those funds out, but. It seems like you guys feel that we're getting another 367000 That is our estimate. Um, the math gets a little fuzzier at the county level than at the, the town level. Uh, but um, I believe the methodology on this was to break out the counties by population and then de- essentially divide the overall sum based on the, the county population. All right. So we'll find out more about that. And actually, I had asked Cheryl Lynn. She just got back to me the last couple of days about that. She hadn't seen that um, definitively what we're getting yet, but she has been looking, and I don't know if you know anything different, Sasha. You haven't seen anything, but yeah. So that question is out there, but we by then, within a month, we'll know what that figure is too, uh, definitively, so we can make a more informed decision there. Yeah. And just in, a, in broad brush strokes, the kinds of limitations on the ARPA funds, and I would encourage you all to read Tom's um, <laughs> resources yourself. Um, But it's things like water infrastructure, sewage infrastructure. There are some uh, relief purposes around business, uh, business relief for businesses directly impacted by COVID. Um, And I think rent, offsetting certain rents might be one of the the options. And then telecommunications infrastructure is is the other major category. Um, But other than that, it's very restrictive as to what the ARPA funds can go to for right now, whether that we're... Retroactively opened up in the future, I don't know, but that is as it stands today. Very good. Any other questions for Chuck? Well, yeah. Okay. 
All right, sure. I Thank will you. expect to come back in, in a month's time. Sasha, I'll, I'll work with you to get on that agenda. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Have a nice evening. Yes, you as well. Thanks for all your hard work. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So are you working for C5 now, is that? No, but I chair the communications committee, so all of the emails that go out and all of the you know broadcasts and the advertising we do and all of that stuff, um, I end up helping push through all the newsletters if you're on the like, email list. Uh, so it's it's a lot, but because I'm also chair of the CV, the, the communications committee, I'm a member of the executive committee and the overall board, so I have meetings multiple nights a week. Well, Plus, you're you're consulting now, right? That's no, actually, I uh, I took a full time job back in March. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. I work for a dog DNA testing company. I thought. So we do like when you want to find out what breed your dog is. Well, my or, daughter uh, just did that. Yeah. Which company? Do you know? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you are. So it's some deal or something. So she did it to check out her dog. Well, if it's Embark, that's my company. I'll have to ask. Yeah. 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 You get some that's free cool. TV uh, advertisement here. Yeah. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> Embark. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. I thought Bark would be good. Yeah. Right, what about the dollar you what you got? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I should not. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I want to know or not. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good dog, I'll tell you that. That's what, that's what really matters, isn't it? Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, take care. Okay, Thank sure. you. Thanks. We'll see you. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and move into um, reports, communications, communications. Sasha, let me start with you. What do you got for us tonight? I've got a whole list. All right. A whole list. John, can you, I got your email about the executive <coughs> session wording. Yeah. Can you say it so that I can correct it? Because I'd already posted the minutes on the website and I didn't want to pull them off. If it's already done, it's Are you good with it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the RFP for the time of our work is, I left a copy there for everybody to see. I just want to make sure that it's good to go ahead and get to the paper tomorrow. Where is that? Yep. Contractors that were on that list. Yep, I've sent it out to two contractors already that Ray and Don had asked me to. Okay. But that's going out in the paper tomorrow. Looks good to me. Is anyone seeing any questions here? And I've been working on the RFP for the reappraisal. Does okay. anybody have any ideas on dates and who you'd like to be in the contact? And what was that? What was the last thing? For reappraising. Yeah, no, the who the contact is? So who the contact is, like within the town, oh. for people to call and some dates, deadlines. Let's, um, why don't we work on that and then bring that back to the board? Okay. So let's sit with Cheryl and the team. She's probably the one who's in that. And anyone else have any ideas, but I don't. And the Green Mountain Power letter is there for signing if you're all good with it. That's the. Um, for spring. For the spring. Yeah. Yep. And then I sent everybody the meeting owl information. Yes. And then there was mm -hmm. Sherwin had a response from somebody, I think it was Williston. It actually there was a good review there. Okay. I sent out an invoice for Martha to Jolly. Okay. That's done. Yeah. Um, I have an appointment set up with the basement guy at the town hall in September. And is that Susan you know what you're Working is asking about lead whacking over at the actual library building. I don't know if that's anything that the guys do have done in the past. We certainly can around the library. Lee, right, you want to give me a list of little things? 
to uh, put together for the road crew. Yep. Was that the basement guy that Callie was talking about, that company? Yep. What was the name of that company anyway? Matt Clark's not a basement system. And then the plumbing issues at the town hall, I got Trevor Clark to take a look at them yesterday. He called me this morning and said that a faucet needs to be replaced, toilet seat needs to be replaced, and the toilets need to be reseated on the floor. He had a toilet seat and a faucet, and he said he's just going to charge us his time. Oh, great. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I don't think. And that was Trevor Clark? Yep. Um, the junkyard John was asking about. The last time it was signed was August 2018 before Cheryl retired. And it won't be up, a, up again until 2023. So you guys are aware of that. And so we. Uh, what are we signing off on that? Just certificate uh, <coughs> of approval. So that's that's all. Uh, that's all I need for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anything's changed there. They're doing the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a different company. Yeah. But, I don't know, maybe they're doing the same thing, but they're, uh, all the, like the fencing and all that stuff is all down, or not all of it, but there's a fair yeah, amount of it that's yeah. not down. Yeah. And there's gates open, and the thing it looks, looks pretty bad. It looks like, yeah. a junkyard. Yeah. It looks like a junkyard, yeah. and it's not supposed to be real visible from what we're seeing. John, do you notice, does the, does the state ever inspect that? Is there any state things that they, the state, they, right on the river or anything like that? The state must yeah, do anything. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. You would think they would, wouldn't right. they? Right, right. They're probably grandfathered in at this point. Yeah, I'm sure they would have that. Yeah. There's no way they would have ever gotten a permit for that in the this century. But. Especially where they were, because they were way down the river. Oh, was it even further? Yeah, you could walk down, there's a hill that goes down. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the bank goes down. Oh, been in there. My dad and I used to go to <laughs> junkyard shopping <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Not a lot, I've been in a lot of junkyards. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've taken some scrap there along that, you know, when they used to take it all the time, you know, a little. You know what, why don't we they have um, they take, they just David they take, take for a while. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, price yeah. so the zoning regulations, and there's got to be things that they're not doing them. I mean, if, I don't, you know, it's a business that's fine, I, they're there, but let's just make sure they're doing what is supposed to be done, because um, I don't think they are at this point. There's going to be some regulations or yeah. methods of operation that they have to comply with. Now, right. I don't, yeah, I agree, I agree with you there. That I don't think that they're doing them. Yeah, I mean, because there's, there's the fence and then there's stuff outside up in front, so. Yeah. Um, because I don't even think Burns, they don't even own it anymore. No, no they don't. They, they try to sell it. Yeah. 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 They don't know they sold it to somebody else. Yeah, so that, that's, and, that, and that's why it's, it, it carries over to the new owners. But, but that doesn't mean that, yeah, they've done everything that Browns were doing. Right. Yeah. There. <clears throat> so we'll take a look at it and then, yeah, so have that one a priority for Jacob. Maybe when the fishing guy, the game guy, is just going to be here, we could just ask him what he wants to know about it. I don't know. Yep, no, I'm just going to be here. All right, Sasha? Uh, I think that's it. All right, well, thank you. We'll uh, sign off on those things when we get to uh, old business. We'll uh, talk about the owl. Uh, Ray, what do you have for us uh, I had uh, Joe Gabri, I believe, fix the uh, doorknob. At the town hall, well, we had a conversation about it, and I, I think it got done. Right. And he's also working up a price on um, fixing the memorial out here in the old town office, so we'll have something we can put in our budget for next year. 
fix that up. So I have to talk to Joe about that. Um, reminding Martin again that I'm willing to help out with his with his uh, computer paperwork. I did not talk to him about uh, having um, Martin. Mar uh, yeah, having yeah, having him help out. But uh, <clears throat> frankly, I've been pretty busy at work there. I'm one month away from retirement. Oh. I'm trying to wrap up a lot of yep. stuff. Full retirement? Well, <laughs> I'd like to think so, but probably not. But uh, close to it, anyways. I'm yeah. going to, you know, that's my goal. Uh, I may help him out as needed, but my goal is to be fully retired yeah. here. It's a good for you, right? You deserve it. You're yeah. hard. You're working hard for the town. I appreciate it all the time you take. You know, yeah. Yeah, the plate's pretty full for right now. Yeah, no, that's, and I'll try to get over there and talk to them too. Um, and if you do, there was the, the brush, have them look at around the, the library or the old library there. Yes. The weed whacker. Also, when they have the weed whacker out, uh, check the sign. I know the sign on the north coming into town, uh, Welcome to Moore Town. It hasn't been mowed in that area. Yes, I noticed that too. Yeah. Um, the other thing, not a weed whacker, but maybe John or whatever you could, The other day I came down the mountain road here to the, the store and it seems like there's a crack. And um, I don't know, about three quarters of the way down. And anyways, is that something we should maybe put some filler in? Not um, asphalt, but like. You know, like rubber or whatever they fill There is a with. rubber sealant or in the asphalt coming down the hill, you're saying? Yeah, it's it's towards the towards the bottom. It's, you know, there may yeah. be other ones there, but it was and also I noticed it was like, oh shit, I don't want to, you know, two years start having big potholes there so we can do something to put some sealer on it. Mm -hmm. Or when you get a moment, again, yeah. when you're driving by, you just take a look and see what Maybe I was exaggerating, but I, was, I don't think so. Anything else, Ray? That's it. Cool. Thank you. Don, what you got going on down there? This is, are we, this is an old business, a new business? It's just what? what are we? This is like, uh, you know, like you've been out and you, know, you had new things that you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. if you want some news, what are you doing? No, 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 it's nothing new. So, uh, we're, the, we got the re ADA report from, from Bill Gallup. Um, it's, this is, uh, I've been just looking at it on my computer and I'm going to get some drawings made that are a little bigger. Uh, I have a, we're going to meet Thursday, the town hall committee is going to meet Thursday, so, and to go over this and see what, you know, what we, you know, what we think and how we might incorporate the ideas that uh, Bill well, some of the code things that he brings up that, that we have to do, but also uh, he certainly um, came up with an idea that, that uh, addresses keeping the whole community dance, so-called dance floor or meeting room floor and achieving ADA access by just, you know, uh, changing the, you know, utilizing the basement and the changing where the lift is. And it's, it's quite, it's uh, quite interesting. Yeah, so it's a first step. I don't, maybe next week we can, or two weeks, we'll talk about it again after everybody gets a chance to look at it, and we'll have our, our committee meeting, and we can give some feedback and talk. So uh, it's really to look at it now. There's a lot of information. There. And the other thing, I, I had Sasha print something that in, back in March. I did a walkthrough of the sand pit. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I only, and again, we could maybe talk. I was going to ask if someday we could maybe before a meeting all meet down there or something. Uh, especially with this hot weather, uh, I've poked in there and looked. I mean, the cars that park and the people that get in there, it just, you know, uh, it's an accident waiting to happen sometimes in there. And especially for mine to have access to get equipment and this or the fire trucks to get water and it's busy with people swimming down there. And I just think it's something we could, we're not going to solve in a walk through, but you know, as time goes by, maybe we can just keep picking away at what we can do to change the landscaping a little bit there. Or the, 
there's that oil tank needed to be right next to the river and stuff like that. You know. So Sasha, yeah. so why don't we take, um, it's always good to look at our properties anyways as a town. So our next meeting, why don't we, we can start at a regular time, but we'll just meet there for half an hour. Yeah, about 15 minutes really. Yeah, so, we'll, yeah. we'll keep it a half between traveling and whatever, so that people are, we'll be back here at 6.30, but no, I think that's a good idea to take. It is kind of a mess, and then we can talk. I got some other things going on there too that we can talk about. Great. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I do. Is that it for you, Kelly? Anything uh, going on? No. No. John. All right. I just wanted to bring up the date on the uh, student outbreak of COVID. Uh, of the it was the rec, what are the program, and there are thirty five out of one hundred and fifty kids were. Tested positive. Oof. Yeah, so they obviously closed, closed it down. But just, you know, I don't know what's going to happen when school starts here. It's, it's just, it's, it's rapid. It's really unbelievable. If you look at the cases in Vermont, and we're back to where we were before, before vaccination. And it's because, of, and, and now, as, as you know, you can, you will be able to get booster vaccine, vaccinations. <clears throat> so, anyway, I'll go mention that. 61 new cases today. 61? Hang on. 61. That's what, that's what that's, I that's, it was yeah. 107 on Friday. So. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and, um, oh, you'll go up more to Mountain Road. Uh, Martin did cut the tree that I was concerned about. That's good. And, uh, I don't know if you can Thanks. Um, I think I don't have anything new with this here, but so let's go ahead and let's. Oh, I'd like to mention one thing. Uh, we are having a, a go-to meeting on Thursday regarding the uh, parking lot storm drainage. Oh, that's Thursday. That's Thursday. Thursday at nine o'clock. Thursday at nine o'clock. Yeah. I didn't see that. She just sent that tonight. I think. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. 9 a.m. Yep. <laughs> oh, and then also, I just want to. Sasha, do you have a key for the town hall here? I do, but something borrowed. I, I grabbed it. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, I lost, uh, my, uh, lost my keys. Which, I guess we have to make it. Yeah, we need to get another one. But, uh, sorry about that, John. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you for coming to the rescue. Keys at the bottom. And I just stopped at the town hall and let them know. So no one's going in. <laughs> but they with the car keys too. <laughs> that was a <the> problem. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. It's what, uh, anyways. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead. We have the min meeting minutes for 8 2 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Oh. There's only one thing I noticed on it that uh, on the meeting notes, uh, Sasha, is that there's a line that um, something about the crack in the floor and that I tell uh, Peck about it. But what I was th talking about in that was that um, it's not, is it Peck? Yeah, no, Peak. Peak. Peak, sorry. Um, that they, they, they wouldn't check the floor. I was thinking I was referencing. I think I was just referencing that they could also look at the um, at the town garage. The next sentence is regarding the town garage, so okay. I think that's what I meant. That maybe they could take a look at that project as well. And I did send their office manager an email a while ago, but I never heard asking if they would be interested. But I never heard back. But maybe you guys would have. You know, we could send them the RFP now that we haven't written, right? Because they do that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. So there's one change. Any other um, changes? All right, is there a second? Second. So if you Cal, uh, all in favor, go ahead. Aye. 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 All right. All uh, right. Old business. I'm gonna start. Um, so for old business, we have 
we've talked about the meeting owl. It seems like it's the price is nine ninety nine, no matter where you look for it. There's good reviews. Um, based on the need, I think we may or may not have coming up, but certainly we may have guests, um, you know, with other companies or places that are restricted in their travel. So I think that we should probably go ahead and purchase the owl. And we can do that with those ARPA funds that is allowed. Yeah. Um, so why not, Sasha, why don't we go ahead and do that and move to, um, to purchase the meeting owl? Second. All in favor of the lie? Aye. Aye. Um, Ray, do you have anything for old business? I do not. Don, what do you got? Uh, no, I'm good. I mean, we are good. Look through that stuff one way. Uh, Callum? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just going to check in. I can't remember what his name is. Adam. I'll check in with Adam because he does VASA at least in like the Berlin area. Yeah, if you do that, and then Sasha, maybe you can uh, reach out to Chad Barrett. Yep. Uh, see when he might be able to stop in and see us. I think he'd be a good person to. Seems like they know about that stuff, right? Um, so he give us an idea of that. Um, good, John. Um, or, uh, in terms of the mirror, um, one hundred feet out. Right? Yep. Should we perhaps uh, check with? Boards and see if they're being able to that. Or? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't think personally. Uh, um, it's with what the state said. I mean, there's a lot more liabilities yeah. that it would be. Um, right. I think the benefits of it. Yeah. Whether it's in or out of the right of way, it's it still have the same. Still there. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. In fact, uh, you know, other vehicles coming in and not knowing what they're looking at, thinking that somebody's coming at them or something. Oh, who knows? But yeah, yeah. I think the uh, negative exceeds the positive as far as a mirror okay. to me. Yeah, no, I agree there. <laughs> but I think. Um, okay. Well, we should know the guy that came in, right? Yeah, I think. Can you let Mr. Uh, uh, it might be interesting to note that he. he Travels these roads, but he lives in Waitsville. Just, I mean, oh. Johnny went out and asked him where they live, and they live up, you know. How, oh, you so know, they live. They got to go up South Hill Road, but then they cross oh, yeah. into Waitsville. I mean, it's still, he's going to come down. Right, so they're not really a more town resident. No, but, you know, it's. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's still. I mean, That's, you know. we, we need to put up a, like a toll bridge for those people, right, or something like that. You know, I know. Oh, I did have. I uh, over a year ago, I did have somebody else ask about that. Yeah, no. And at that yeah. time, I let them know that it, it, you know it's not it's not allowed. We all know it's a definitely a tricky intersection. Yeah, for so sure. Yeah. Maybe that's why there's never been an accident there, is because we all, everybody, you know, so you just can't pull out. Stop. Yeah, you actually stop there because if you don't. It's you're dead. You're dead, or possibly dead. Um, so we looked at CB Fiber, the AT ordinance, uh, War Memorial, Service Office, Legal Trails. Um, Travis, thank you for bringing that up. We'll look in the um, meeting minutes for that, and hopefully we'll rectify that in the next meeting. Um, also, it pertains to you uh, as far as some more legal trail issues with Cheryl has uh, been trying to meet with the attorneys to get things uh, on all our trails, um, whether it, both sides of the mountain taken care of, that we have going on. And so hopefully we'll get that finished up here within a uh, short period of time. Um, is there any new business anyone has? I wonder about the, the potholes at the end of the drive here. Can you get those taken care of? I'm asking the boys to take care of that. They're in our driveway, right, John? Yep. Yep. All right. Sasha, what about you? Anything new that 
we need to be looking at. sign here and uh, we can get out of here. Adjourn. I'll second that. All right, great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.